Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, thank you for, for coming. Uh, my name is Vladimir Pavlov. I'm from SAP Labs Bulgaria, uh, responsible for product management for SAP Cloud Platform. And it's my pleasure to be today here with you and uh, to present you the capabilities of the Cloud Platform, but uh, first of all, how to get started with it. And um, basically to have a free account and to, to experience it for yourself and hopefully afterwards to be able to um, develop business applications and um, um, hopefully also uh, productize that uh, if you're a partner um, company to um, uh, sell these applications to end users, to end customers, or so if you're a customer also to uh, utilize the platform to build uh, business applications for yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, um, as I said, first uh, I'll start with um, with an overview of the platform and the, the use cases that uh, that it uh, addresses, and uh, then uh, I'll show you a bit more of the capabilities, and there will be also um, several demos. Uh, hopefully, everything was okay with the connection. Um, and uh, of course, at the end, we'll have time for uh, question and answers. So uh, let's, uh, as, the, as, the, as the title of the session says, uh, innovate and extend uh, uh, with an enterprise digital business platform. Uh, what do we need to innovate for and uh, what do we need to extend? And uh, what is digital transformation, as maybe you've read also in the, in the abstract of the session. So uh, let's first look at the key market trends nowadays. Uh, one prediction of Gartner is that by 2025, uh, every industry will be transformed by digital business. And also then by then, that by that year, uh, uh, will be 76% of the workforce globally will be millennials. Um, and uh, as some of you um, are also probably familiar, millennials or even are millennials, uh, they uh, demand basically a uh, different uh, um, different way of uh, working with uh, uh, work processes and uh, interaction with the with the software, uh, and that uh, um, that is uh, a change in, in in the paradigm how um, how you uh, provide such innovations for for the for your end users. Uh, because uh, it's not the, the, the typical silos uh, uh, programs and uh, solutions and processes that, uh, that are available anymore, but everything should be more integrated and uh, digitized. And uh, cloud is uh, uh, even more and more uh, adopted uh, uh, lately. So um, yeah, software as a service is everywhere. And that's uh, a key uh, and very uh, visible trend. So, um, of course, uh, there should be also means to uh, customize such uh, software or service applications. Of course, not uh, not everything fits uh, fits everyone. Okay, and what is driving actually this uh, this digital uh, transformation? It's uh, uh, a lot of things, of course. Uh, it's IoT, which is uh, uh, um, everywhere nowadays. Uh, it's social collaboration, big data, of course. Um, so uh, better user and customer experience, mobile, everyone is mobile now, and so on, and yeah, real-time decisions. And um, with that, uh, companies are now, uh, each and every company basically is uh, looking into the so-called bimodal IT and what we mean by bimodal IT. Uh, so there are two modes actually. Mode one is uh, basically um, relying on a stable core, uh, running uh, the, the core business processes and systems. Uh, and uh, um, on the other hand, you, you need to innovate, you need to be agile. And this is uh, the so-called mode two where you experiment more frequently and uh, in a more faster way. And uh, yeah, how, how do you engage with your uh, users? How do you get 
frequent feedback from them and apply the feedback for the next iteration, uh, how you decide what to do, how you measure, and uh, for example, some sensors and so on. So um, that's why it's important that, first of all, you protect your uh, and safeguard your business processes and systems, and, but on the other hand, you uh, really um, cater to your uh, users that need such uh, an agile innovation and uh, do this in a, let's say, sandbox environment so that it doesn't affect uh, your, uh, your core business processes if something goes wrong. So uh, that's, that's now the, the, the key uh, thing that uh, comes into play uh, that uh, like companies, because of all this uh, that I already mentioned, are becoming more, every company is becoming a software driven company and uh, achieving that by connecting, intelligently connecting people, things and businesses. Uh, intelligently, for example, by uh, applying machine learning, uh, connecting people by integration of different, uh, okay, not only, uh, okay, integrating people and business systems, uh, collaboration between people, mobile, with user experience, real-time analytics, uh, things, of course, with Internet of Things, uh, connecting to the core uh, business systems from the edge. Uh, and uh, yeah, integration, I mentioned already several times, APIs, uh, API management, API consumption, uh, and uh, microservices, which is uh, a, a trending topic uh, lately also, um, especially in the cloud case. So uh, what is how and how uh, cloud platform, uh, SAP cloud platform helping to, uh, to achieve these goals? Uh, basically in three different streams but they're not so different, they're of course connected you know, between each other. So um, first of all, for the agile um, component, let's say, uh, the cloud platform uh, powers businesses by uh, providing abilities to quickly extend and customize uh, existing cloud and also on-premise systems and applications. And it's not only about uh, connecting to uh, or, or extending uh, SAP uh, systems and uh, solutions, but also third-party uh, vendor applications. Then, uh, for optimizing uh, the, the opportunities uh, that, that's achieved by connecting the, the cloud and on-premise applications uh, and uh, integrating the entire lands landscape so that uh, the silos of data and processes are eliminated. And uh, for the so-called, let's say, digital net new applications, uh, that's also uh, a use case that the cloud platform addresses to basically build on, uh, on new uh, opportunities and uh, new problems that, uh, that can be solved and uh, engage with customers and drive new, uh, new revenue for, uh, for yourself and your company, of course. And uh, what are the five uh, different uh, innovation um, aspects, let's say. Uh, first of all, we have uh, um, uh, a, a variety of tools to deliver modern user experience to any user on any device uh, following the so-called SAP Fiori uh, paradigm. Um, have you heard actually by of anyone of SAP Fiori? Oh. So, um, that's basically the, the, the design uh, guideline from SAP for uh, really a responsive uh, user, uh, user applications and uh, user interfaces uh, which work uh, um, seamlessly on any device. So you write once and deploy it uh, either to the PC or to the mobile or to the uh, no, to a, uh, 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 Tablet and uh, it basically adapts to the uh, to, to the screen and uh, it's also a concept about how you integrate with the backend business system. So that's the uh, basically new uh, new user experience, uh, modern user experience from SAP. Uh, then uh, SAP is uh, probably uh, very well known or most well known for. Uh, nowadays for analytics, uh, uh, data analytics, big data, 
based on, on HANA. Have you heard at least about HANA? Yeah, okay, some of you. So I'll mention that a bit later, but uh, this is um, another pillar here to acquire insights and uh, intelligence with analytics. Uh, then I mentioned uh, Internet of Things uh, as a key driver uh, for um, connecting devices with the business applications, um, collaboration and integration um, of applications and data. Uh, it's okay now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So these are the uh, key you know, innovation aspects that the cloud platform uh, provides and addresses. Um, now a, a bit more detailed introduction to SAP Cloud Platform. Um, this is the, the platform as a service from SAP. And as a platform as a service, as any platform as a service, it stands uh, um, in the, in the so-called, let's say, tiers of the cloud between the infrastructure as a service and the software as a service. Uh, so uh, this it's it's a, a, a platform to build uh, end user applications on top, right? So um, it runs on uh, infrastructure as a service, which uh, is provided by SAP data centers, and uh, lately we also expand to uh, uh, third-party data centers like Amazon and Google. Uh, but the most important part is that uh, we have a lot of business services and platform services that you use to, to build your applications. Uh, there are a variety of runtimes uh, that you can use. Uh, currently, it's a Java server-side JavaScript and HTML5 for lightweight uh, uh, user interfaces. Uh, but with uh, the introduction of Cloud Foundry, have you heard of Cloud Foundry? Yeah? Okay. So uh, Cloud Foundry is a standard platform as a service uh, provided by a foundation where uh, a variety of vendors participate, and SAP is one of them, uh, to provide a standard uh, platform as a service. And of course, each vendor would then provide each uh, their, their own business services and technical services. Uh, but basically, Cloud Foundry allows you to, uh, to provide uh, new runtimes that uh, um, uh, can be used uh, uh, depending on your uh, skill set in, in your organization and your um, programming uh, experience. So uh, with that, we, there will be also, uh, actually it would be announced that uh, today or tomorrow that Cloud Foundry is generally available on the, cloud, on the SAP Cloud Platform and uh, there will be, it will be possible to write applications also in Python or uh, Node.js, as it says here, uh, Ruby and so on. And uh, on the software as a service side, uh, as I said, it's uh, one of the key uh, values or advantages of cloud, SAP Cloud Platform is to extend existing solutions. Uh, in the software as a service space. So we have a lot of uh, uh, products that are available for the different line of businesses like uh, SAP success factors for HR, uh, Cloud for Customer, or SAP Ariba for uh, uh, co um, commerce and also for um, connecting uh, suppliers and uh, 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 and um, buyers, uh, concur for travel and expense and so on. So the cloud platform is in the center because it uh, allows the integration and the customization of uh, all these uh, solutions from SAP, but not only from SAP, as I said, it can be used to uh, customize uh, any, any software or service that has uh, well-defined APIs. <coughs> 
And uh, let me also uh, go a bit into more details about the capabilities that the cloud platform provides. So uh, on the user experience side, uh, as I said, we have the, the SAP Fiori uh, is a um, um, user-centric and responsive uh, UI for, uh, for all devices. Um, we have the, the build uh, tool for uh, rapidly prototyping and gathering feedback from, uh, from end users on the solutions and applications that you build. And uh, the Cloud Platform Portal for um, um, building portal sites and uh, out-of-box integration to some of these uh, software as a service solutions that I already mentioned. Um, for mobile, uh, the Cloud Platform provides uh, services for development and operations, so uh, you can build uh, native uh, applications, for example, with the recently uh, delivered uh, uh, Cloud Platform SDK for iOS, and you can also build uh, hybrid applications uh, uh, for, uh, for, by, for example, using Capso. Um, and also there is services for um, securely managing the devices, uh, for example, in a, in a corporation uh, that uh, you can easily onboard new customers by a single click by the central IT. And uh, by that, uh, um, provide a seamless, uh, seamless onboarding experience and management for the applications on the on these corporate devices. Uh, there is, as I said, collaboration is one important aspect uh, in, the, in the digital uh, world. So um, there is uh, SAP Jam for um, uh, so enterprise social collaboration between users, uh, exchange of ideas and feedback and so on. Uh, document Center for um, securely managing and accessing uh, sorry, documents on uh, any device uh, so that you can also access it on, on the go from your mobile device, for example, uh, some business documents. And um, yeah, let's not go into much details about anything. Everything, um, so on the analytics side, uh, SAP Business Objects Cloud is an important uh, solution to uh, discover, visualize, and uh, plan uh, uh, according to business data and uh, big data, of course, uh, so that you um, basically respond to new business challenges and opportunities based on existing uh, corporate and performance, uh, company performance data. Uh, also, there are uh, advanced analytics services for um, predictive analysis uh, based on some statistical algorithms. Uh, there is also uh, a very versatile uh, text analysis and uh, fuzzy text analysis, mining and searching. Uh, there's also uh, abilities to uh, uh, analyze geospatial data uh, which is actually uh, one of the um, heavily used uh, uh, features of, uh, of SAP HANA for, for example, applications um, utilizing also the data from uh, European Space Agency or NASA, uh, and so on and so on. Um, IoT, uh, there is uh, also uh, the option to connect, as I said, edge devices, for example, sensors, uh, and um, to bring the data to the cloud platform where it can be analyzed or there can be built uh, uh, business applications uh, uh, on top of this data, uh, which is uh, transported through uh, REST services uh, from, uh, from the device to the, to the cloud. Uh, so there is also the, the, the management of, uh, of such uh, edge devices and synchronization between the data on them and the, and the cloud when, uh, for example, there is an um, unreliable network uh, or um, they are not connected all the time to the internet. So um, a lot of really uh, useful capabilities for uh, managing IoT scenarios. Uh, business services as well for building uh, uh, commerce and marketing and uh, uh, support uh, applications. Uh, 
with the so-called uh, hybrid as a service uh, um, marketplace of uh, all, all these are microservices which everyone can uh, build and deploy to, to this marketplace and also use uh, pre-existing uh, services from it. Uh, integration, I already mentioned that uh, um, the cloud platform can uh, integrate different uh, uh, systems either on premise or in the cloud uh, so that uh, you can um, basically get better idea of the data that is uh, stored in these systems and maybe correlate the data and uh, based on that provide uh, more meaningful um, suggestions or uh, proposals to, to improve uh, the, uh, the, the business processes. And uh, also uh, APIs are really important uh, for, for such integrations and uh, also API management, uh, which is available also as a service on the SAP Cloud Platform. So, for example, to manage the, uh, the quota of the calls to your APIs or the, um, the, 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 the throttling of such APIs, if, uh, of such API calls, if required, and uh, monitoring and real-time statistics on such APIs. Okay, um, there's also workflow services for um, um, collaborating uh, and uh, uh, approval requests uh, and uh, order fulfillment and so on uh, between different uh, um, different um, I'll say uh, over the word. Uh, Uh, respons responsible, let's say, in, in the organization uh, for uh, for for uh, such such, uh, such a business process. Um, so uh, this is all based on standard uh, uh, notations and standard tools. Um, yeah, and uh, for data and storage, uh, here I really want to, to put the emphasis on SAP HANA, which is the the, the flagship product of, uh, of SAP. Uh, uh, we, it is not only an, uh, a database, it's uh, first of all it's in, in memory, which is important to, to note, uh, the, which uh, provides for real time uh, and really fast uh, operations on the data, but it also provides a variety of services that you can use and uh, uh, directly um, operate on the data inside, the, inside HANA, which is um, more of a, a data data management platform than a, just a simple relational database. And the important aspect here is that uh, since uh, it provides uh, not only transactional but also analytical capabilities, uh, the, the, all, the, all the workloads can be carried out uh, in the same application without uh, moving the data from a, from a relational database to some tool where you would uh, do the analytics. And that's really a, a key advantage of, of HANA to, uh, to combine uh, these uh, operations in one, uh, one single place, in one single tool. Um, yeah, so HANA is uh, uh, for relational data and everything that is not, uh, not structured data, unstructured data, uh, like documents or pictures can be uh, stored in, uh, in the document service, uh, which is also standard-based, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, uh, CMIS standard by Oasis. Uh, it uh, provides all the features that you would require for any uh, document management or knowledge management uh, uh, solution, like versioning of the files, hierarchies, access control, and so on. Okay, and last but not least, uh, security, which is even more important in the cloud probably than, than on-premise. Uh, although we are, uh, all the time we're facing uh, security breaches uh, lately with uh, this uh, WannaCry attack, you probably all have heard already. Uh, but yeah, security is even more important in the cloud and uh, uh, the SAP Cloud Platform provides uh, a standard-based single sign-on capability, which is based on SML2. Uh, so delegating authentication to third-party identity providers 
um, also can it can be used with uh, uh, social login providers like Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. Um, and also there is the, the, the native SAP Cloud Identity Authentication Service, which provides you with a customized branding and look and feel for your uh, login screens and uh, centralized account and user management, two-factor authentication, and all the enterprise features that you would uh, expect from a, uh, from such such a enterprise ready uh, security uh, identity provider okay um, yeah maybe just a few more words about development and operations and uh, then we'll go really into uh, looking into this uh, how, how it looks like in terms of uh, hands-on experience so um, for development, we have a, a number of IDEs. So, for, for especially for Java, uh, there is the, uh, the well-known open source Eclipse IDE. Uh, I'll show you that in a, in a, in a, in a moment. Uh, so, basically, the, the whole idea is that we want to uh, provide, uh, to be based on open source and open standards as much as possible, so that uh, users who are familiar with the uh, uh, particular development paradigm can um, easily jump on the platform uh, with, uh, uh, without too much uh, learning. And really the Eclipse ID is a standard, okay, the, the, the tools for, for cloud platform are standard plugins in the Eclipse ID and everything looks like standard uh, Java E, or Java or Java E development in Eclipse and uh, just the connection to the cloud is the important um, tiny tiny plugin that uh, the, the cloud platform provides. Uh, also for other uh, runtimes like uh, JavaScript and HTML5, we have the web IDs, uh, and also for HANA development, which is completely browser-based, and uh, tools, for example, for translation of your applications, uh, so the SAP translation hub, which uh, can utilize the, uh, the knowledge from SAP of uh, about 40 different languages uh, for, for different domains and uh, uh, nomenclatures. And yeah, for runtimes, I already mentioned that currently we provide uh, a few, few runtimes uh, like Java Server Sky JavaScript directly in the HANA engine and uh, UI5 which is HTML5 and JavaScript based also, but uh, with the uh, uh, coming support for Cloud Foundry, uh, we'll be adding more and more uh, options and uh, users will be able also to bring their own language uh, if they want to utilize a particular, uh, particular runtime or language that they are familiar with and it's still not available on the platform. Okay, so uh, I'll now uh, go switch to, to, to the demo. Uh, are there any questions up to now, actually? Okay, so we'll have any uh, anyway time for questions at the end. Um, so um, let's let's first look at uh, how it would look like if you are completely new to the cloud platform and then your uh, starting point would be uh, cloudplatform.sap.com where you can find all kind of information about the platform um, use cases, capabilities that I already mentioned, and uh, some success stories. But more important uh, for developers like you, I guess, is to really get uh, uh, get your hands dirty with the platform. And, uh, oops, it's not showing, sorry. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is the, again, cloudplatform.sap.com, your starting point for uh, getting started with the, with the platform. 
Um, yeah, these are the, basically the different tabs and where you can find all these resources that I just mentioned. And uh, if you want to get started with the platform, uh, here is, uh, uh, you can go directly to, to this uh, login, which would open the registration page. Okay, for me actually, it somehow opened directly my account, I believe. Yep. Um, just a second, if I can switch off the... Okay, but uh, basically the, the registration is not that important, it's just a form that you provide a bit of details about yourself, um, I mean, standard registration uh, page. The, the more important thing about it is probably that with this registration you also get a user that you can uh, use for um, all the cloud services from SAP, uh, also the communities where you can uh, collaborate and ask questions and uh, Find, uh, find the tutorials and blogs and so on. Um, so this is the, the, the previously mentioned uh, uh, SAP Cloud Identity Authentication Service, uh, which is handling the central user base for, uh, for all the applications uh, by SAP. And yeah, after this registration, uh, you would get into the so-called uh, Cloud Platform co Cockpit. And this is really the uh, the administrative, uh, the one-stop uh, tool, browser-based tool for administration of, uh, of your applications and data in the cloud. Uh, what you get and what you see here is uh, the so-called trial account. It's a limited account in terms of uh, in terms of resources that you can use. Uh, but uh, for example, you can have only one started. Java application at a time, but you can, of course, deploy as many as you wish. This is one of the, uh, the limitations, and it's also mentioned here, by the way. And, uh, but otherwise, yeah, another limitation is that it's only, because it's a personal account, you can only have uh, yourself in the account, whereas if you buy uh, one of the productive uh, versions, uh, productive accounts, uh, it's, uh, of course, uh, enabled for team development and collaboration and so on. So, um, but otherwise you have all the services, even some more services that are not available for production accounts because they are better services and better services are not allowed to be used in productive accounts. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, this account doesn't expire, so it's perpetual, you can use it uh, uh, not like maybe with other vendors, like for 30 days or 90 days, you can use it forever and uh, with these limitations about the resources that I mentioned. And if you go to, yeah, but, but actually maybe a worth, something that is worth mentioning is that the cloud platform is available in a, a number of data centers or regions as we call them all over the world. And uh, particularly the trial account is uh, only in Europe, but uh, okay, for trial and uh, getting familiar with the platform, it should be okay. It's not anyway meant for productive usage. And after going to a particular region, you will see the, uh, the list of the accounts you are a member of. In this case, since it's a trial, uh, trial region, it's only one uh, account that you see. And this is the, um, the overview of our account where you can see the, all your Java applications, database systems, uh, HTML5 applications, so on. Um, you can manage your applications from, from here. Uh, so, for example, you can also look at the, at the usage and the, uh, um, the, the utilization of, of resources and, for example, the it's a bit slow now loading, I guess, but um, the, all the different statistics about uh, uh, requests to your application and so on. Um, 
No, 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 it's not the problem. If it's, uh, it just still doesn't load fully. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll actually actually work with this application in, in the next uh, step. So uh, hopefully then we'll be able to see a bit more interesting information about it. And uh, what I really want to, to show as well is um, if you go actually, yeah, this is on the, on the home page. Uh, you can see all these regions where the cloud platform is available. As you can see, we all already have the Cloud Foundry environment as well. Uh, and uh, in some of the data centers, uh, this new environment is the one that I was mo mostly talking up to now, uh, with uh, these three different uh, runtimes that, uh, that are available. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll be also speeding up uh, providing a Cloud Foundry environment if in, the, in the other data centers. And I also want to show the services, uh, which are actually the correspond to the capabilities, all the, ca all the vast capabilities that I mentioned. So as you can see, here we have uh, like 60 services now uh, from which, you, you, which uh, you can use. Of course, if you are using a productive account, uh, you should also have the subscriptions for a particular service. Uh, so not all the services are available in all the packages, but for trial you can use all of them basically, and they're separated in, in all these categories that are following the, uh, the presentation. Uh, so each service is described here, and uh, you can from here directly go to the service and use it. But uh, so that we don't lose too much time more, uh, as I said, the more maybe for you as developers, more important is how development looks like, and that's standard development in Eclipse. So, um, for example, in this case, uh, we have uh, just the standard Neon Eclipse. Uh, are, are you using Eclipse or IntelliJ or Eclipse? Anyone? Okay. So I guess more fans of IntelliJ or yeah. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Um, yeah, um, for for standard Eclipse development, uh, it uh, you see that it's really um, nothing new, and compared to to other other servers that are available uh, on the market, and uh, what you would just need to to have is, for example, to go and install new software and uh, select uh, an update site. Actually, maybe I, I should also say a few more words about it. So if you go to this tools.hana.ondemand.com, this is where all the SAP tools are available, uh, not only for the cloud, but also for different other uh, products and solutions. And uh, from here, yeah, let's click on the cloud. Uh, so there is uh, this uh, update site that you would need to use in Eclipse, and that would install just uh, a few more plugins. Uh, I won't do it now because I already did it to save some time. And uh, you also need to download the so-called SDKs here. Uh, unfortunately, somehow it doesn't work to select it, but these are the different SDKs for developing against the different flavors of the Java runtime. Um, so we have a Tomcat uh, runtime and also a Java E6 runtime for more, uh, with more, uh, more features of the Java platform. Uh, and uh, then, uh, for example, I have here an application, a very simple application actually, uh, that is just one servlet uh, which uh, injects uh, some, some printer object uh, using CGI and uh, then uh, it, uh, it prints uh, using the printer object to print some greeting and, uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is using uh, another greeting object which is injecting and, uh, okay, it says uh, the, yeah, it says good afternoon uh, and the, 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 the name of the, uh, that you, you that you provide. And then how, it, how does it look like uh, to, to deploy this application running on the cloud? Um, yeah, standard as with uh, uh, with uh, any other uh, server in Eclipse, you click right-click on the on the project or on the file that you want to 
uh, to open and run on server and you either select uh, create a new server or select an existing server and let's in this case deploy it to, to this uh, that I have already prepared yeah because I already made it uh, deployed the application task where I should really want to, to update the application so this is uh, this would take maybe a minute or uh, or two uh, not more definitely because it's deploying really to the cloud which is hosted uh, in, the, in this case uh, in, in Germany uh, but uh, what I want to, to mention also um, that uh, you can also play around uh, with a so-called simulation of the, of the cloud runtime, uh, which is available locally. Maybe you've noticed when I uh, yeah, clicked on run on server, uh, I had the, the, the option also of this local local server here, which is uh, basically the same runtime that you get in the cloud uh, on your local machine. And uh, um, basically also simulating also the services that are available in the cloud, not only the, the runtime. Um, Yeah, in, in the meantime, yeah, uh, let's also look into what we were not able to, to see previously. Uh, so if I go again to, to my account. And yeah, you see the application now is, is starting in this cockpit and also uh, okay it should be almost done because the application URL is already there you can see the, the statistic about the, the request the CPU consumption and so on you can find also the logs here of the application uh, presently there are no logs uh, but uh, after some usage there will be and uh, all the information about it um, you can find the configuration about destinations to connect to third-party systems or data source bindings to, to connect to a database. In this case, actually, when you deploy in the trial account, the application will automatically uh, has uh, uh, assigned uh, a database in the cloud, which is also based on HANA. Uh, and um, let's see if it should be almost ready already. Uh, I'm afraid it's time out this time because um, yeah usually two two minutes is uh, the, the, the default time out and um, it should be sufficient, but um, in this case, I'm not sure what happened. Probably check also the airlock. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the the, the case because uh, yeah, it was more than two minutes that we started and. Okay, I can try to, to increase the timeout a bit and, um, and because I really want to show another another feature which is really um, really um, um, let's say uh, um, a differentiator um, that that not uh, that other vendors or may, maybe not. Uh, not so few ha ha has it about debugging in the cloud. Um, and in the meantime, while we, while we are waiting for it to start, um, I would also like to show you how re you really can extend such uh, software as service solutions. Uh, that's uh, that's actually the, the, the place to go is the so-called SAP uh, API Hub, which is again easy to remember at api.sap.com. Okay, 
because it's HTTP, yes, I'm not sure why I didn't catch it immediately. Uh, and this is the uh, the, the so-called API hub where you have the other APIs from SAP and other vendors. Uh, can I have just two more minutes? Because it says time's up, but yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, uh, so you can explore and not only explore, but also test and prototype with these APIs that uh, that are available through this API hub. Um, so they're grouped in, in, in by, by software as a service that, uh, that is provided, for example, for success factors. Um, you can, as I said, success factors uh, is the SAP solution for HR, for human capital management in the cloud. And uh, it provides an all data API that uh, you can uh, um, browse here all the different artifacts that are available in the in the system for example for user information um, I hope it's uh, yeah it's a bit faster now you can you can get the users you can uh, update the users and so on but uh, the idea is that you really can test it here uh, with all the all the uh, okay you need to I need to also log in I'm not sure it, why single sign-on didn't work in this case um, yeah so this is really a, a comprehensive list of the APIs which uh, for example you can list the, the, the users but I would just list maybe three of them because there are a lot of users in this this is actually a, a sandbox demo system it's not of course uh, real data of real users of some company uh, but just for prototyping your application you can for example I put the to, to, to give the three top users and try it out let's see in the meanwhile what's happening with the okay the application is now started um, while well, it's uh, this is doing some job uh, let's uh, let's quickly open the application Uh, we should now just open the URL. Okay, I just clicked on the wrong file, but if I go to the home page. Yeah, so you see, but uh, the, the, the thing is that I show this, this is the application, not really fancy UI, just a simple demo, but uh, what uh, what I showed you that it should say good afternoon and uh, yeah then Riga Dev Days, but in this case you see that it's saying Sveiki Riga Dev Days, so something is not really working. Maybe you already have a guess what's what's wrong, but if you don't have a guess, uh, the the quickest way to find out is to uh, restart in the book and don't be worried, uh, restarting the book won't really restart the server because we are using uh, the SAP JVM which can restart on the fly. Uh, okay, not restart on the fly, it's attaching the debugger on the fly without restart. And uh, now I can easily put, for example, uh, a, a break for breakpoint somewhere in, the, in this file, let's say, and again, request the application Okay, switch to the bug perspective, and yeah, the the thing is, it's really you would say nothing so so special, of course, but uh, because we are debugging in the cloud, and probably know that the debug protocol for Java is very talkative, uh, it's not really feasible to 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 have a, a decent user experience when debugging in the cloud. But in this case, uh, the thing is that I can really quickly uh, debug because we have an optimization based also on the SAP JVM and the debugging is similar user experience as in the local case. And what I really see immediately is that it's actually imported, uh, injected not the greeting but this informal greeting uh, class here mm -hmm. and I can go to the actual, uh, sorry, uh, okay let's, uh, Okay, open the actual type and see that that's where actually it's coming, this, this fakey. And not only that, but I can also on the fly ch change it to, um, 
Okay. Whatever. Hello. <laughs> Save it, and then continue with the with the session, and we'll see that it says now hello. So really, not rocket science. Something that you would see uh, in the in the in the local case, and would uh, uh, of course take it for granted. But in the cloud, it's really important to have this fast user. Uh, experience and fast uh, feedback about about your debugging and let's see just if it's yeah um, so we here we have the result of our uh, code to the API of course it's uh, some very uh, heavy JSON but you can also easily incorporate this this course in your business applications uh, this is uh, just showing how it how the result would look like and sorry for a bit for the for the overtime. Hope uh, hope it was interesting. And if you have any questions, maybe if we have time now, or I will be available uh, afterwards as well. Thanks a lot, Vladimir. Maybe if you have questions, please try to catch what. 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 Please try to catch what.